Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and now this is chapter number eight, and we are going to talk about animation inside Maya 2013. Now, let's see why we want to animate something. Well, the thing is that thanks to 3D animation, we can actually take something like this, which is some kind of uh, inorganic object and we can actually make him move and that's the cool thing about that because I mean when you're gonna see a real uh, kind of ship or plane I don't know what is this but moving like this okay that's pretty cool don't you think it's like kind of a, an organic uh, uh, object but at the same time is an inorganic object doing things weird things and that's the, 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 the cool thing about 3d animation we want to animate all these guys all the things that we create inside uh, the 3D space and I mean probably you are like no I'm just uh, the, the type of person that wants to create objects and create one still image but still imagine if you can animate that that will be awesome so that's why animation it's awesome <laughs> now before we jump into animation I want you to know that uh, this is a part of a, a, a series of training videos we have in, inside in uh, our channel in YouTube channel but uh, also we have uh, complete training programs in our website so you can go and take a look in there and if you really want to become a pro uh, I recommend you to take one of our courses and I guarantee you that they are the most complete complete training courses out there and after that commercial all right so <laughs> excuse me we can keep talking about animation so perfect now animation is uh, actually no animation <laughs> What I mean is that animation is based on movement. And right now, if we look at this object, it's a static, right? And it doesn't look like it's animated. Now, if I take this and I start moving this, we are getting something. We are animating this object. But all this information is not being stored, which means that if I release my mouse and stop doing that with my hand, this object is going to be static one more time. Now, animation is the process of... Uh, giving us the illusion of movement is not actually moving all right is giving us that illusion and we can do that by using different images or different frames and all these frames need to have a different type of setting or something different in in every single one of them in order to see something happening because if we have uh, a lot of different frames with the same object it doesn't matter how fast or how slow we reproduce reproduce these objects they're always gonna have the same object static and in the same position but now if I take one object or one image and I change it to this and then if I switch from one to another I will get one that looks like this and one that looks like that so we have two different images and every time I switch between them I will get this and that this and that all right so if we get more, if we have more frames and we have more images in different positions, what we will get is that illusion of reproducing movement. And that's the cool thing about it. Now, traditional animation was made using uh, kind of, let's say, paper, all right? Kind of paper that you can uh, put on top of another one and then you can just flip them all and you will get that uh, effect. But now in, in, in the digital world, we don't, we don't use um, paper anymore. So everything is inside the computer. And in order to represent our paper, we will need something like this. In this case, our timeline. Okay. So in this area, we have numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc., etc. So each one of these represent one piece of paper. Okay. One object, one frame. So what we need is to draw something in frame number one and probably something in frame number two. Now the cool thing about digital animation is that we actually don't need to draw in every single one of these objects. What we can do is actually come to frame one, draw something here, then come to frame 12, draw something here, and all the between, all what is in between these two objects is gonna be drawn automatically, which is pretty cool because uh, that can speed up the process a lot. Okay, now how we how can we do that? Well, the first thing is set up the position of our object, which in this case is probably going to be right there. And I'm going to call my outliner. And another thing that I'm going to do is if, if you go to uh, skin, you can go to go bind pose and oops, sorry, 
and that is going to take uh, your object to the default version okay where everything is uh, without any other movement so that's cool now what I will do is remember we hide our object here the terrain so I'm going to select the terrain which uh, you can see that is kind of uh, in, a, in a gray color so I'm going to select that and now I want to make it visible by uh, by pressing Control shift H that, that way I can make it visible again so now let's take our joints and I'm going to select press W in order to change to my move tool and I'm going to go higher like this that's perfect and I don't know I can take this object and place it right here for example and now one I need to keep in mind is that I need to store information only in the joint number one okay in my joints joint because uh, I'm that's the here's the the boss of the rest of the joints so that's one thing that we have to keep in mind when we are uh, creating our keyframes we don't want to uh, key uh, in places where we don't need all that information because if we were playing if we were creating this for a video game all that information you know needs to be stored somehow and represents data and data if we have a lot of data you know it will take uh, resources from our machines and you know it's not a, a good idea and also we will end up with a lot of keyframes that probably are going to make uh, the process of animation more confusing so try to identify where you need to place your keyframes before you start placing keyframes all right but now what is a keyframe well a keyframe is uh, like I told you one frame is a piece of paper or one sheet all right so what we can do with a keyframe is actually store information in that uh, device and it's going to remember where we are placing that object so for example in frame number one I will create a keyframe that will store the position all these values that we have here for example the translate uh, a position where this guy is located so all the information is going to be stored in that number one frame then if I go to frame number 12 excuse me and I move this guy to this position I can store that position and what I'm going to have is not a jumping effect from 12 to 1 because what it's going to do Maya is going to create the transition between all these frames and it's going to change the parameters automatically without me coming and uh, adding all these parameters by hand so that's why it's really important to uh, you know s set up what is your gonna what uh, the speed of your reproduction of frames is going to be and in this case we we have everything set up to 24 frames per second which which is actually the same uh, range that is used by uh, films and that's going to work pretty good because right now we have 1 12 and 24 so we have uh, uh, 24 will uh, will make one second okay so for reference that's good so what I will do now is I'm gonna take uh, you know what let's make it bigger I'm gonna make it 48 so I will take this bar and I will drag it to the top to this uh, right side and that will give me two frames 48 frames which means two seconds at 24 frames per second all right so now let's let's start animating something the first thing find the position that you want in this case it's going to be right here and I'm going to animate the joints object and I'm going to animate the ship if I want to animate the ship you can see that if I select the ship I don't have access to my gizmo because that is kind of blocked right now it's locked and what is driving my the, the shape of this object is the joints all right so I want to animate the joints so let's take the joints and what I will do is go here and in the translate I can animate all these parameters by right clicking and then I have the option set key okay so you have a lot of different options you can create a new expression if you want and then uh, it can get a lot more complex but this is not what we want right now so we're gonna right click and then set key and then we will release that and now all these parameters are in color red which means that we have a keyframe whatever you see this red color that means that we have a keyframe these uh, the, all these parameters are stored in, in in that keyframe now another way of looking at all our keyframes is if you come down here you will see that before the number one I have a red line right there which means that we have a keyframe and that's one way of finding where our keyframes are located 
So now we want another keyframe probably at uh, second, oh, at the end of our animation at frame 48. So now we need another keyframe. What I will do is move my frame, okay, to 48 in this case. I need to do that first. And after I have that, I will take my object and I will move its position to this area, for example. And now you can see that right here I have translate in red still, selecting 48. Now what I will do is right click and I'm gonna set a key, okay? So now I have a key in 48 and I have a key in number one. Now let me press the rewind button right here and you can see how right away this object went back to its original position but it's because that information was stored in frame number one so when we are coming back to one we get that information so now let's press play and let's see what happened wow it's going really really fast right well let's fix that and that is first of all because the reproduction of our animation is being dri uh, driven by another option and what i want is right clicking here and oh no you can see that well what we will do is go to um, windows settings preferences and i will go here press preferences and i'm gonna go to animation and here in animation i should have the dynamics file animation settings time degrees centimeters linear i should have it right here animation independent auto keyframe where is my time slider I think it's right yeah it, it was right here time slider and I want I, I'm gonna change this from play every frame to real time okay I want to, to see the real time animation of this and then I will press save and I was looking for that in here and actually I can if you right click here on top of the timeline you will have and uh, the last option is called play uh, play bla uh, blast but before that and uh, at the beginning of that set you will have something called playback speed and then you will have these three options real time and that's the one we want okay so now with real time if i click play you will see how this object is kind of moving and we are getting something we have our animation pretty cool perfect so now what else can we do with this well another thing that we can do is uh, I, I want to show you that we have another ob object, another option here in animation editors. I go to window, animation editors. We have the graph editor. And this editor allows me to change the behavior of my, of, of my objects, of my animation. Now what you can see here in this panel, I'm just gonna make it a little bit more, a little smaller, so that uh, it's like a, another version of our timeline but with a lot of different options and really cool options because allows us to change the behavior of the keyframes and the behavior of the tangents and the curves all these lines that you can see right now here are representing each one of the different dimensions or each one of the different properties as you can see translation x is in the, the red line then translate z is the blue line and then y is the a green line which means that if I take this key for example and then I go to my move tool I can take it and move my object up and down but actually what I'm doing right now is moving uh, basically that uh, keyframe so that's something uh, really cool because otherwise if uh, if you come for example to frame 26 and then I place here 55 and I press enter you can see that my object is gonna go really high well it's gonna move a lot but as soon as I, I press rewind and play my object is gonna stay in the same position and you're gonna get only this uh, behavior if you store that information okay if you don't store that value you won't uh, get that, uh, uh, that that translation value is not gonna get stored so that doesn't mean that when you come here to the graph editor uh, this information is gonna uh, is going to stay uh, is not going to stay that's the advantage of using this for example if I come here and I tweak that that information is actually being stored that's the new value of that so if I go and rewind this that's what I'm going to get okay it's not uh, it's not like tweaking the parameter right here so that's because 
when you have your your first values you can actually come here and start tweaking this no I, I think it should go more like this or you can even tweak the other position of your object in this case I will go to translate X and you can say no I want it a little bit farther away closer etc etc so now this is uh, using only the the basic translation options now something else that we can use is actually I can take the rotation tool for example and now I can rotate and and tweak the this other option all right that allows me to do some kind of maneuvers so what I will do now is show you another option which means that I can actually take this little guy here you can see a key a, a graphic representation of a key so if I press that now that means that my key my, my keyframes are gonna be whatever I move my object automatically I'm gonna be creating keyframes which is good but sometimes it's terrible because you need to know that that button is pressed otherwise you probably can end up you can end up with uh, tweaking the the previous keyframes that you had already um, tweaked or stored so what I will do now is with this option activate activated I can click you know drag in this curvature for example and right now doesn't have uh, nothing is happening if I click rewind you can see it stays right there but rotate doesn't have anything it's not red why is that because we haven't uh, specified that we want a, a keyframe right there so now if I click and play that is going to stay the same okay I'm going to stop rewind and click one more time in my in my keyframe animation so I'm going to go now to frame 48 and then I'm going to set that to zero and same thing it's not going to happen it's not going to change this value if I rewind it's going to stay the way it is so what we need to do is basically have first of all one animation or one keyframe so what I will do is just change that and then I go here and select set key okay and I have this keyframe right here now what I will do is go to the end of my animation 48 and I want to switch this value like that but now I am not gonna go here and create another animation because that should be uh, automatically uh, stored by this parameter that we are, that we are using the in between the automatic keyframe so now let me rewind this and now as you can see this object is having one position and it should be rotating as he moves forward and let's see yeah we have that sweet uh, sweet uh, nice behavior right now something else that I can do is come to frame 24 and now we can I can select again this other tool and my move tool I can go to my top view and I'm gonna go like that and let's see the movement we have a straight line perfect but I want to take that in frame 24 and I'm gonna move it a little bit slightly well not slightly I, I want to exaggerate that movement so that you can see better and now because I have the automatic behavior active I don't need to come back here and translate right click and create a keyframe you can see that right away I can see the frame inside my viewport my uh, timeline so now let's rewind I'm gonna change obviously my perspective view and I'm gonna deactivate I'm gonna press again this one because I don't want to have uh, any trouble so I'm gonna rewind and play this and shoom, you can see the effect that we are getting actually pretty cool I really like the way he's tra traveling and that's basically basically how we can animate inside Maya obviously animation is a big and huge topic and you need well I mean we have an entire course that talks about animation for one year and it's not about Maya animation I mean it's about animation just understanding and creating animations uh, obviously involves Maya uh, and, and other different type of uh, software but traditional animation also and it has to do with uh, you know you need to understand time you need to understand uh, exaggeration uh, all these things that are gonna make your animation uh, animations look uh, cool so for now uh, I think that's it thank you very much and I will see you in our next movie remember please if you like this video just click on the, on the like button subscribe and that way uh, you know you may you're gonna make us create more and more videos for you thank you very much and
and I will see you in our next movie. Bye-bye for now.